Welcome to another exciting episode of Mini Grinder Paints. In this episode, I'll be painting Reaper's Maldricar. As you can see, I painted her up as no particular five-headed chromatic dragon. It's just a completely, <clears throat> completely generic five-headed chromatic dragon. Don't tase me, Hasbro. This is the first piece that I painted with the intent of entering into a competition, and I took it down to ReaperCon, submitted it into the painter's division, and why did I look at that? That sexy fella picked himself up a gold. Uh, many thanks to the ReaperCon folks and everybody there. Uh, it was a blast down there. I'm really proud of this piece. I'm actually really excited that I captured every single gory detail to share with you. So, without further ado, here is Reaper's Maldricar. A Queen's Summons. Start with the OSL effect on the belly side. I'm going to use Deep Ocean, Jade Green, and Neon Yellow. The uh, figure is dark primed with a dry brushing of white. And I've put white uh, wherever that light source is going to be. Uh, so it's really easy to keep track of um, the effect, basically. Because I've, I've kind of like quarantined it off. I said, okay, so I'm just going to white prime the area that's the OSL effect first, and then I'm going to paint that. And that's kind of how I approached this entire piece, just by, you know, compartmentalizing the project into these little sub-projects. And then it didn't seem like I was performing an OSL effect as much as it was, just some simple techniques. Here's a little bit of dry brushing with the jade green, and then I'm going to kind of dry brush over with some deep ocean to kind of blend in those two colors now again i say that i'm dry brushing but in all actuality it's kind of a wet brushing even though it's not you can see it doesn't go on super grainy i'm not too worried about the grain either because of the, well with this base it's the stone is stony so you kind of want it to be a little bit grainy Anyways, it doesn't go on very grainy. As you can see right here, I'm, I'm doing dry brush motions upward because the light source is coming from underneath. And it's going on fairly smooth, as you can see here. And the way I do that is by loading the brush. Um, well, first I clean the brush, and then I wipe most of the water off of it. And then when I dry brush with that, it then goes on a lot smoother. Now there's a fine line, it could go on very wet. Like right here is way too much water, that's not really a wet brushing, that's more of just a straight up glaze. You can see that deep ocean really brings in uh, the color from, the, from that jade green, it really um, makes it quite striking uh, as we take that light source into the shadow. So after the dry brushing of white and that pseudo wet brushing of jade green, and following with that glaze of uh, deep ocean. I'm now going in with more deep ocean and um, accentuating the you know, crevices with that, that are helping to anyways, because um, I really want uh, that depth to show up. Um, and whenever you have just a little bit too much water or whatever, you can always just brush it away with a clean brush there. Now again, to build up that depth, I'm going in with some jade green it's uh, loaded on a uh, just a typical brush probably either recently cleaned or whatnot it doesn't necessarily matter um, but you I wanted to go on a little thicker there because it's kind of like the highlight just goes to show that you don't need a lot of different colors to make something look pleasant to the eye um, especially those two colors, it's something about a man, but it, it always gets me some, the range in between blues and greens, I just get, you know, just make me feel good. So here I'm loading up a typical detailer, uh, to the 2-0 detailer, um, and I'm using the water from my, uh, pseudo wet palette, um, it's more like a water reservoir, you know what it really is? that sponge thing that I use, that, that thing right there, that's my tongue. <laughs> so, like, I noticed how wonderful spit is to, you know, that's, everybody, everybody does it, they've done it, there's something about it, I've watched old videos of these ladies painting these watches or something like that, 
and um, this is like from the 20s or whatever. And they, they're all licking their, <laughs> they're all licking their brushes, uh, like even though they're dirty or you know, pigment on them or whatever. Anywho, that's my that's my simulated tongue. I said I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> lick my brushes anymore. It's like, but I still want that tongue uh, that tongue action. <laughs> So I was like, eh, I think I'll make a tongue. And this, it's not, it's not your typical wet palette, but it performs the same operation. It gets the water uh, to the paint. And honestly, like I find it easier to gauge how much water I'm adding to the pigment when I use that, you know, uh, because, you know, it's, it's the same application every single time. Number one, you know. Number two, you can use it also for uh, any kind of wet technique that's out there. You can, if you push the brush down in and collect a bunch of water, then uh, you can use that for like a wash. If you just stroke the brush on uh, the sponge and collect some water, that's kind of like a glaze. And if you um, then do the same thing, maybe just like tap it a little bit and mix it in with the paint, then you know you get a little bit of better flow for your uh, for your paint. So that's 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 basically what that thing is. It's a wet palette, but it's not. So I'm building up the shadow color here with midnight blue. You can see I'm bridge I've bridged the OSL with the shadow using that midnight blue. And then Recently, what I've been doing is painting the shadows, and when I do so, I, I think of like all that detail that you're missing when something when you when you basically paint on a shadow. So I said, well, let's highlight the shadow with another shadow color. So using midnight blue and twilight blue, you can do that, as you can see right here. And here I'm doing another of the uh, uh, the midnight blue was basically a dry brush on almost and then uh, this is like a pseudo wet brush to follow after and that's how you get that nice uh, smooth look as you can see I went back in and also you know kind of build up that that sh that highlight to the shadow I've been painting like this recently because I, I'm just really into that dynamic painted look uh, so I just want to I want to make it colorful and bright and vibrant and that seems seems to work <laughs> so now what I'm doing is I'm painting on the um, there's gonna be torchlight a torchlight effect that's under the wings if we go back and look at the, the finished pictures in the beginning and that torchlight uh, is another OSL effect and I'm gonna use that torchlight to highlight the shadow and that is, that's the method here that I'm, uh, I'm using to create that torchlight effect, basically. A couple simple uh, sort of wet brushings uh, for the shadow. And then now I'm just going on. Uh, the brush is loaded. It's somewhat damp. Uh, and I just sort of build up that, that, sh that, that torchlight uh, with Phoenix Red. So the more I'm painting, the the less I'm approaching figures like, you know, this is a red dragon, so I'm going to paint all all the body red. You know, I, um That's fine. That's that's totally all right. Uh, but uh, it just it's something about just playing with the light that just really really makes me feel good. So one of the reasons it looks good too so there's a plus to it I guess but the reason why I'm painting this way is I'm less interested in applying color to the figure as I am showing off the model itself you know the sculptor put a ton of work into this and um, Julie Guthrie did a wonderful job at capturing every single curve just just in the, in the most perfect way you know the the way the horns flow they have that 
slight gradual uh, uh, reflex kind of and it's just pleasing to the eye and then when you play with the light sources and then in the way that I am to accentuate all that hard work that the sculptor put into the piece all those wonderful curves that are in that piece if you were to just go and paint the whole side of it red for instance which is totally all right you know you <laughs> think that that's a, you know i do that stuff too it's okay but um not every piece has to be ridiculous like this one <laughs> but um when you just paint when you broadside the side of a dragon with one flat color you know there's what happens to all the wonderful work that the sculptor put into the piece you know it gets kind of drowned out in a, in a wall of color rather than you know when you play around with light sources like this um, you know it actually helps you bring out those curves you know it helps you all you have to do is just think about the light source its position in the direction in which it radiates and that that vector it hits the, the figure at some point right and that 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 points where you know you're going to be applying that that highlight so that's just what i've done here i've i started with a glaze of the shadow uh midnight blue and then i'm painting painting it on the light uh the light source is a natural light coming from above and i've i've built up that light source um, first before applying the color so when I apply the color it'll automatically come out in the next part of the video we're going to uh, paint up the blue dragon head we're going to start with the eyes we're using non-metal metal gold shadow so palomino gold uh, looks like burgundy wine and obviously it's white we're going to base it here with the non-metal metal, metal uh, shadow gold shadow and then just doing some detailing here um, with the palomino gold to to sort of build up the iris irises uh, and then um, going through and lining with the burgundy wine uh, to kind of give it some color give those eyes some color and, uh, and then building up the pupil there with some pure black a white dot for the the glare the eye and uh, going back in with some palomino gold uh, to sort of like I said bring out that the iris colors they got kind of got lost along the way so sometimes you have to go back and build that up again next up we're gonna take care of that yellow streak that goes across the blue dragon's face or at least this blue dragon's face with non-metal metal shadow, uh, non-metal metal base, both gold, and then buckskin pale as a highlight there. And then when I do the jaws, we're going to use um, burgundy wine and monster maw, which is a fantastic color actually. I really like that color. So here's the burgundy wine. Um, the brush uh, is damp and fairly damp and then loaded with that burgundy wine and that's how we kind of like kind of get that glaze over the white and get the natural highlight that i built in beforehand and then i'll go back through and i'll highlight the gums then with the monster maw and then that's that's where we that's that looks very gummy so here I'm mixing that burgundy wine with the non-metal metal, metal uh, uh, gold shadow. And I'm doing that to kind of make a, a skin color. So like around the eyes here and that skin flap in between the bottom and top jaw. Uh, and then what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit more of the base color uh that non-metal metal shadow color uh to the mix to kind of bring it out maybe a little bit of that palomino gold um so now i'm just basing the teeth and uh horns with dark skin shadow 
and finishing off those highlights on the on the jaws with the monster mop. So all the horns are going to get the non-metal metal, metal um, uh, gold shadow color um, on top of the the dark shadow color, and then a highlight of the H bone, basically. That's kind of like my go-to horn algorithm. It usually involves a brown color followed by H-Bone, because H-Bone is such a wonderful, wonderful color. But these are some really big horns, so that allows me some, some space to play. That's why I'm using that non-metal metal, metal um, gold shadow color to kind of bring out or that that depth there because I could go straight from uh, brown to age bone and I think I do in some of the other dragon heads but seeing as I have that yellow that gold color in the face already it seemed natural to go that direction with it so here's the, the age bone the star of the show I'm just gonna go ahead and build up build up the the actual color of the horns and teeth using dark shadow i just kind of go in and adding some gunk gunk around the, the between the teeth and the gums and i'm just touching some things up um in between just kind of really trying to trying to develop that that bone bony color next up is the skin we got brown blue first first up and uh, that's our base layer. So uh, don't forget that I've, I've pre-highlighted. This allows me to use less pigment wherever I want. I can go heavy handed in other places to really, really bring out that blue color. Because I am going to highlight it after the fact. Um, I'm even kind of blending in with some of that gold, uh, gold in the face. There under the eye. And, and whatnot. I'm just gonna pick up some of the Surf Aqua and blend that into the that brown blue. I'm using this as my highlight color for the skin. It scales. Yeah, whatever. Using a damp brush and that Surf Aqua, I'm just gonna keep on developing the highlight. A little here, a little there. I'm trying to take note of all the sort of nooks and crannies that are, are darker and then kind of avoiding that area uh, when when highlighting. There's you know no roadmap or anything. You just kind of figure it out along the way. Here I didn't really I didn't really want that that line there I wanted to kind of create some scales so I'm kind of tricking the eye by going in and painting on um, those scales by painting a dark line in between uh, with the I think midnight blue and then um, kind of trying to play again with the shadow there on the natural uh, light lit areas I'm not highlighting with the uh, buckskin pail. So we're wrapping up the blue dragon head here. It's looking pretty awesome. <laughs> Sorry. I, know, I sound like I'm following myself. I'm, I'm actually quite modest. As modest as a narcissist can be, I guess. There's, I don't know, some fine line there. <laughs> Borderline. I'm not really narcissistic either. I don't know what I am. When I went to school and studied mathematics, that's when I realized how um, not smart I am. <laughs> Imperial Purple is just wrapping up the blue dragon there. Kind of trying to build up that natural uh, shadow. Next up is the white dragon head. Hey, it's a looker. Whites and purples, it made sense to me. Uh, these are the eye colors I'm going to be using. Um, it's 
pretty typical. You start with a, a darker color and then highlight on top of that. Then fill in your details and touch up and eye glare. <laughs> it's like, you know, there's all these algorithms uh, and to me. That's all I see when I paint are these algorithms, you know, um, and layers. Everything's layers. Just build on top of layers. And it helps you... You know, it makes the free hands look better and all that stuff. You know, like this, 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 this de detailing right here. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time on. You know, it, it just kind of have to flesh out the um, what you're going for. In that situation, I wasn't so much painting that lighter color as I was um, kind of building up the shape of the purple, the darker purple that was in the base. I was actually painting the base color with that highlight. Um, I was looking at that. I was looking at the negative space. You can see its effect there. I'm just kind of figuring out where that, where the eye is going to be. By eye, I mean pupil. Yeah, he's kind of looking down at you. I like that. And then using that deep red again, fleshing out that eye. It's it's not it's not just one flat color. There's more to it. And this this model has some big dragon eyes. It really affords you the space to be playing around with it in this manner. You know, the eye looks. I've never painted more wonderful eyes than when I painted it on this model. Simply because the the dragon heads are huge. You know, they're big. I mean, the eye, so their eyes are big, really big. And yeah, it affords you the space and, and to to really play with doing dragon eyes. So if you're doing Maldricar, you'll take the opportunity to practice on your dragon eyes. Then you're you're gonna have to paint another one, <laughs> or go back and finish yours. So next up, the skin, twilight blue, snow shadow. Pure white. So I'm going to go deep red there. And so what I'm going to do is um, I'm kind of like with a glaze or almost almost like a wash, somewhere between a wash and a glaze. Um, kind of building up the shadow color of the natural light. So most of that side of the face is. Um, you know, it's, it's really a base layer. It's kind of a base layer to the white skin. At any rate, I want that purplish element um, to come out uh, from underneath the, the white scales of the, of the dragon. So wherever possible, wherever, wherever I can, I'm just throwing it down. Um, especially in sort of critical locations like around the mouth here. Um, and a little bit on the underside, in the ears, on those horns, around the eyes, the, the sort of fleshy areas, you know. And then as my brush, as I'm, I'm wearing some pigment out of my brush, I just sort of blend it into the rest. Um, and now I'm going in and using a liner brush to even um, to, to line in the shadow spaces even more so with that deep red color. It's kind of a dynamic sort of base coat. You can think of it that way. The overall idea is to make this thing look cold. That's why a snow shadow was kind of like an odd I was like, oh, I wonder what color I should use for like kind of like the base coat of the white dragon scales. Oh, snow shadow? That sounds like cold. <laughs> the purple makes it look frigid though you know that's it's where it looks you know almost crystalline or frig, frigid hard ice but the snow shadow is kind of a good sort of um it's the base coat of of the way it's so that simple really so um when the blue dragon i use brown as the base coat for the teeth uh, and the horns and stuff here 
I'll be using more purples again to get that kind of frigid look. It, the, the main point is to use a darker color, you know, for your sort of like, you know, where the teeth, for the teeth and the horns and, and bone, bony stuff in general. And then you highlight on top of that with lighter colors. It's, I mean, it's that simple. I'm going back in with uh, some of that deep red and kind of trying to get some of those those horn strokey things. <laughs> I don't know what those things are called. The ripples of the horns, whatever they are, I don't know. Again, there's no shadow. Slowly building up that that highlight there. It's easy to get heavy-handed with highlights. You really, only you only just need a little bit. You know, you just want to make sure it goes on the right way. If you don't know what the right way is, I mean, just use a little bit more water in your glaze and your blend, and you know, kind of build it up slowly. And then once you get to a desired sort of state, then you know, a desired opacity. Then you're good. Move on to the next layer. But and, and that's kind of how I operate. I've just gotten to the point right now where I, I kind of go I go straight I get straight to the point. You know I've done it enough now to where I'm, I'm getting better at just figuring out exactly how much water to put on my brush. A lot of that, a lot of wet painting, is just exactly that. It's all about loading your brush properly and. Um, with both paint and water. That's that's it. And it takes a lot of practice. So just, just start practicing basically. This part's actually easy because there's there's like no water on the brush. It's all paint. <laughs> it's really easy. Right? Yeah, there's clearly water in, in, in with the pigment you can see it it really helps it flow on and you know it's not as it goes on kind of like a, as a transparent layer you're kind of tinting the the color on you know and just kind of masking it on glazing it on and that just helps you build up the the, the definition and the detail and all the wonderful parts about the model now watch here, this is a lot of fun. This is exactly what I'm talking about, where if you lightly load a brush uh, that is damp or wet, you know, where you dilute the, the, the pigment, you're kind of building up that opacity. Um, you can really create some, some fun shades there. And that was done effortlessly, really. You know, there's the base coats and all that other stuff. And then you're just building up to that one moment where you just kind of wipe the whole thing with some deep red. And it comes out, you know, awesome. It's those kinds of techniques. Utilizing those techniques together, which, you know, makes your life a whole lot easier. Like, to have to paint each one of those things, uh, the scales, that tint of deep red, it would be ridiculous. It would be ridiculous. But I just went over the whole thing. And get a nice smooth gradient out of the mess you know you know everybody has methods and some people sort of stick to the same method of over and over and over that's, the, that's just their go-to methods but what it really is in the end is a collection of techniques and what distinguishes one painter from another is the methodology that each of them use you know we all are using the same techniques but we apply them slightly differently. And so I hope you join me for the next episode of uh, Winnegrainer Paints Reaper's Maldricar, where I tackle the rest of the model. I'll be doing the black dragon, the green dragon, the red dragon, the backs, uh, the wings, but not the base. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, by the time I finished this thing up, I was packing my bags for ReaperCon, taking Terrascapes on the road, 
and getting that thing funded. So there was just so much going on. I couldn't get the base done. I didn't finish the base of this model until months after it was finished uh, when the smoke cleared after all was said and done. Again, thank you for watching and have a 